Servus, Mena, it's Red Pill Germany again. The pact against Germany and maybe against all of Europe has finally been signed. I am talking about the coalition contract between the Social Democrats, the Green Party and the Liberal Party in Germany. All three parties now signed this document and also just today Mr. Olaf Scholz has been elected Chancellor of Germany which means that we officially have a new government now. In today's video, I want to explain to you what happened, what the process is, and also what this coalition contract says. It is a declaration of their will, of their goals for the next four years. It is, so to speak, a four-year plan of the new government. And in the end, I want to tell you what kind of changes I expect. I want to tell you how I think this new government will differ from the old one under Angela Merkel. But before we get into all of that, I want to thank my subscribers and my supporters. If you like this video, then share it and leave a like and a comment down below. Consider checking me out on other social media platforms or supporting my channel via Patreon or Subscribestar. All right, so first I want to clarify what this contract is and what it isn't. So as I said, it is more a declaration of will. It is not a legally binding contract between those parties. There have been many, many things that were written in former um, coalition contracts that were never realized or not like they said in the beginning they would do it. A lot of it is phrased in very vague language and general descriptions of what they intend to do. That is of course by design because they want to leave open a wide corridor to maneuver in and they don't really know what will come and how strong their coalition will be in the future. But in a couple of points they were actually very much to the point, quantitative even, and I want to present to you some of these points later. I find them very interesting. So it remains to be seen if these points or if this coalition contract will be realized, will be put into actual laws. Angela Merkel, for example, she didn't care too much about it. She just um, proclaimed one crisis after the other and then she reacted to them and reality forced her to do that and things have changed and now we have more information blah 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 she constantly changed the deal and she constantly made it up as she went along that was her style and uh, Mr. Scholz he was the vice chancellor under her in the previous government let's see how he will do that and it's not only his decision the other two parties are also important here of course so I read most of this coalition contract. I skipped some of the parts that were not really interesting to me, but I read most of it that was relevant for um, the things I talk about. My general impression is that, wow, this is really a document of wokeness. Merkel's government was a lot of things and you can say a lot about them. Of course, they were not good for Germany. They did a lot of horrible things, but they were not woke. Now, of course, this is more a cultural question or a question of style, maybe, but um, it really is striking how much woke language and how many woke buzzwords are in this document. It is alphabet here, rainbow there, gender there. It is really a document of wokeness. And that is already a big change from the previous government, I think. So as our constitutional rights, our civil rights are really eroded or taken away, or let's phrase it differently, it is revealed now that we never had them to begin with. I think this is the correct way to describe this process that we see. While this is happening, these special groups, these specially protected groups, they get more and more special protection and special rights and privileges, while the average German citizen has none of these rights. So generally, we can expect a lot of tax money to be pumped into these rainbow causes and also a lot of these initiatives and a lot of new jobs being created a lot of new NGO-like jobs or administrative jobs that are dealing explicitly with these groups and these people. 
Of course, at the same time, they are waging a battle against the nuclear families in Germany. Their plan is, for example, to increase the taxes that traditional families have to pay. That is families that practice some sort of division of labor where one of the parents is earning the money for the family and the other parent is caring for the children. Normally, of course, the father um, goes to work. Women, of course, choose a partner with a higher income because they want to care for their children they want to be homemakers stay-at-home moms etc these couples had a pretty good tax deal so far but this new government wants to end that and the goal is of course to give financial incentives or in some cases depending on their income and costs of living etc to force them even to give their children away to the state to care for them so that means daycare and all these things or schools that offer these whole day programs so that the state can tax two incomes two people and the children are raised by the state and not by the parents anymore so another point or another field that I find interesting is transportation and energy and here they make some more clear statements and that is for example that they definitely want to end uh, coal power early in the 2030s they want to terminate electricity production by burning coal. They also seem to know exactly how much electricity Germans will be needing in 2030 and they also say that 80% of that should be generated by wind, solar and water power. Which is of course completely insane and uh, we don't have a storage technology, we don't have industrial scale batteries, so that means that is power waste, that is a stochastic random source of power. It doesn't really help because you need the power when you need it unless they want to change that. And then another very interesting point, it is about cars of course, by the year 2035 they want to ban cars with internal combustion engines to be registered. That means you can still drive your own car maybe, but you cannot register a new car with an internal combustion engine. Or how they phrase it, only CO2 neutral cars will be allowed to be registered. If they mean by that electric cars or battery powered cars, then that is not correct. But we all know that they just assume that they are CO2 neutral, which is of course not true. But when you look at these points like power production or what kind of cars Germans should be driving, you really see that they are somewhat like a socialist or communist government. That means they have these four year plans and they say, oh, we should produce this many pairs of boots and this many jackets and this many cars and 50% uh, of the cars should be red and 20% should be blue and 30% should be gray and that's what the people will need that's what the people will have period so it is politicians that are planning or that are ordering the industry to build or produce this and that or to provide these services. It is not the economy, it is not the free market that satisfies the need of the people. It is the government that dictates which goods or services will be available and will be produced in 10 years. If that is not communism, then, well, then we have to find a new definition of the word, I guess. All right, then there are some more interesting points. They say that they want to make Germany more attractive to irregular travelers. Yeah, because right now Germany, compared to so many other countries, is so unattractive to these people. Yeah, our open borders and our gigantic welfare state, it is not attracting them hard enough. We need to increase the attractiveness of Germany for those people who want to feel um, taken care of and feel at home in our welfare system. So if that would be realized, then 2015 will be nothing in comparison to what is ahead of us here in Germany and Europe. They basically want to increase the pull factors. 
They also completely blur or actually eliminate the lines between immigration and uh, providing people who claim that they are persecuted some protection. They completely blur those lines and now they just call everything immigration and they want to end illegal immigration by making it legal, period. After just a couple of years these people can become citizens of course and also they don't have to prove that they speak the language or something, a German language that is of course. So the policy of replacement will be pursued and implemented much more intensely as it has been the case so far. Another interesting point might be that they want to reduce the age of voting from 18 now to 16 and they will do that in the case of the elections for the European Parliament and they aim, they want to do that in the case of the elections to the Bundestag because here they need to actually change the German constitution and that is not in their power alone. They need other parties for that. Their majority in parliament is not enough for a constitutional reform here. It is of course straightforward to understand why they want to do that. Young people vote, well let's say, a little differently than older people and these leftist parties, they want to use that. They want to use this momentum, this indoctrination from the public school system to shift the outcome of future votes more to the leftist camp. If the CDU agrees to that, to change the constitution, then they are really out of their minds because their voters are of course older people, but hey, nothing would surprise me anymore at this point. If they get the order from high above, then they will do it. All right, so I don't want to bore you with more details. These were a couple of points that I found interesting or noteworthy. There are many more, but I want to keep it at that. So generally I want to say if you thought that Angela Merkel is literally the devil and the worst thing that ever happened to Germany, well then I would say yeah that is all true but it is the worst thing that happened until now. Always remember it can always get worse. There is no limit to how bad things can become. So I think the Warburg Chancellor Mr. Schulz He and his government will probably be much worse for Germany than Angela Merkel and her government was. Just right now the immigration numbers are skyrocketing once again and I am sure Schulz and his government are already working hard to prepare the next wave that will make 2015 seem like a minor inconvenience by comparison. And while Angela Merkel's government was of course very anti-German and anti-European, their style and the way they communicated were rather matter of fact and even dry. Now however we have officially arrived in clown world. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below and maybe make some predictions. What do you expect to come out of Germany now? Especially I would be interested in hearing from our dear neighbors. Servus Kameraden!